Welcome to the class students. Today we are going to discuss chapter 4, sorting materials into groups. Let's warm up. Here are the some objects. Write down the names of different materials used to make these objects. Here is object, school bag, water bottle. So you have to write materials used. You can do it by yourself. Let's know about objects around us, properties of materials, need of classifying objects. Okay, students, so these are the topics we will discuss in our chapter. Here, objects around us. When we see around ourselves, we observe many different things. These objects have different shapes, sizes, and colors. They are also made of different materials. Some objects are made of paper, while others are made of soil or mud. Some may be made of plastic, while others are made of glass. Wood, metal, fiber, steel and leather are some more examples of materials. Objects like pencil, chair, table, door, etc. are made of wood. Book, duster, pencil box, etc. are rectangular in shape. We can group these given objects on the basis of materials they are made of their shapes. The process of grouping things on the basis of some criteria is known as classification. Let's now do an activity to understand grouping of objects more clearly. Here is an activity aim to group objects on the basis of materials they are made of. Materials required, objects like a pencil, a sharpener, an eraser, a mug, a pen, a pencil box, a chalk, a duster, a bread, toys, a lunch box, a shop, a toothbrush, etc. You may collect as many objects as possible. Procedure, identify the objects which are made of plastic, which are not made of plastic, that means non-plastic. Write their names in the table given alongside. So, you can do this activity by yourself. Conclusion. Conclusion. Objects can be grouped on the basis of materials from which they are made. Here, advantages of classification of different materials. First, classification makes it convenient to study the properties of any object of one category and also observe any pattern in these properties. So, students, classification is one type of ki objects ki properties ko easily read. Kar sakte. Look at the picture. Objects are made of different materials. Classification of objects help in identification. Classification helps in location of the things. It is only because of classification. We are able to short out a book out of the thousand books in our school library. Here is properties of materials. Different types of materials have different properties. In order to choose a material to make an object, we need to keep the following things in mind. The purpose for which the object is to be used. The properties of the material. Suppose it is students, you have to use Suppose you have to make a cooker, so you will not make a wood cooker. Why will you not make a wood cooker? Because it will go away. As you will heat it, wood is flammable. So what are all these things? That you are making a object, you are making a property of what you are making and what you are making. You are making all these things. Here is appearance. Objects around us look very different from each other. Here is appearance. Objects around us look very different from each other. This is because the nature of materials from which they are made different from each other. Rubber appears very different from wood, copper appears very different from silver or gold. But at the same time, if you can look at them carefully, metals like copper, iron, silver, gold and aluminium have a common property that means they all sign. Similarly, wood or rubber have a common property that means they do not sign. So students, appearance का meaning क्या है कि कोई object आपको कैसी दिखाई देती है? हमारे metal sign करते हैं तो हमें पता चल जाता है कि it is a metal. Okay? Here, on the basis of signing property, materials are classified as lustrous objects. These are the objects which sign. Non-lustrous objects. These are the objects which do not sign. Look at the picture. Aluminium pot, gold bangles, copper wire, iron nails. Metal are lustrous. Here is activity, activity 2, to group objects as lustrous and non-lustrous. Collect materials like a wooden spoon, a metal spoon, a rubber band, a piece of copper wire, a coin, a pencil, a plastic comb, a piece of aluminium foil, a metal key, a tin can, a pair of scissors, a piece of silk cloth, 
a clean iron nail and a piece of silver foil. Now observe these objects carefully and group them as lustrous and no lustrous objects. In the table given here, here is hardness. Hardness is another property to group different materials objects such as cotton, wool and a sponge are very easy to press. They change their shape when pressed. These materials are called soft materials. However, materials like wood, stone and iron are hard to press. They are called hard materials. Do you know? Diamond is the hardest known material in the world. It is used to cut glass. Here we have check and made. You can do it by yourself. Transparency. Transparency is the property of a material which tells whether we can see through the object or no. So students, transparent means if you can see any object or any material, you can see it from the R part. That is transparency. Here is activity 3. To understand transparency of objects, you will need a book, a butter paper and a piece of glass. Now fold the book upright on a table and place your hand behind the book. Ask your friend if he is able to see your hand behind the book. Repeat the same with the butter paper and the glass piece. Record your friend's observation in the following table. So you can do it as students and then write your observation in this observation table. Objects through which we are not able to see at all are called opaque -like objects. Example, notebook, wood, brick, etc. Objects through which we are able to see but not clearly are called translucent objects. Example, ground glass, thin sheet of plastic, butter paper, etc. Objects through which we are able to see very clearly are called transparent objects. Example, air, water, glass, etc. Here is solubility. A large number of material can dissolve in water. But water cannot dissolve all the materials. The property of dissolving an object in water is called solubility. We can group objects on the basis of their solubility. Get it students? Now come to the next activity, activity 4. To group objects on the basis of their solubility in water. Collect sugar, chalk powder, baking powder, talcum powder, vinegar, mustard oil, corn flour, milk, wax, turmeric powder, coconut oil, lemon juice and honey. Add small amounts of each one of these objects to a glass tumbler half filled with water and a stick identify the materials that are soluble, insoluble in water. Group them in the following table. So students, you have to materials collect all the materials. You have to dissolve in water and see what dissolve hoga, that is soluble, what is not soluble, that is insoluble. There are some gases that are soluble in water. Whereas other are insoluble in water. Oxygen gas is soluble in water. Aquatic plants and animals use the oxygen gas dissolved in water. For their survival, another gas that can dissolve in water is carbon dioxide. Aquatic plants use carbon dioxide gas dissolved in water to make their own food. Photosynthesis. Nitrogen gas, however, does not dissolve in water and is said to be insoluble in water. Get it, students? Here. Materials which dissolve in water are called soluble materials. Materials which do not dissolve in water are called insoluble materials. Let us understand this with the help of simple activity. Here is flotation. We can group the materials on the basis of floating or sinking in water. Let us perform an activity. Here is activity 5. To group objects on the basis of floating or sinking in water. Collect materials like dried leaves, a laminate of a pen, a sharpener, an eraser, thin wooden sticks, a coin, a metal key, a sponge, a sieving needle, pins and iron nail. Take a tumbler and fill water in it. One by one, place each of these materials in the tumbler. Observe whether it floats or sinks in water. Group them in the table given below. So students, what do you want to do? You have to take all these things and put one object in the water. Which object is floating, which object is floating, which is sinking, or you have to write it in your stable. Substances which are denser than water sink. On the other hand, substances which are less dense than water float. Here are other properties of materials. There are many other ways by which objects around us can be grouped. A few more properties are as follows. Heat conductivity. Objects that allow heat to pass through them are called conductors or good conductors of heat. Example, gold, silver, etc. 
On the other hand, objects that do not allow heat to pass through them are called insulators or bad conductors of heat. Example, coal, cardboard, etc. Here, electrical conductivity. Objects that allow electric current to pass through them are called conductors or good conductors of electricity. Example, copper, aluminium, tap water, etc. On the other hand, objects that do not allow an electric current to pass through them are called insulators or bad conductors of electricity. Example, wood, air. Here is magnetic materials. Magnetic materials are those that are attracted to a magnet. Some examples of magnetic materials are iron objects, nickel and cobalt. The property of magnetic materials of getting attracted to a magnet called magnetism. Here again we have check and made so you can do it by yourself. What we learn in this chapter now we will discuss it in a nutshell. Objects are classified on the basis of similarities or differences in their properties or characteristics. On the basis of signing property, materials are classified as lustrous object and no lustrous object. The property of dissolving an object in water is called solubility. Materials which dissolve in water are called soluble materials. Materials which do not dissolve in water are called insoluble materials. Objects through which we are not able to see at all are called opaque objects. Objects through which we are able to see very clearly are called transparent objects. Here are some keywords. Luster, a gentle scene or soft glow. Transparency, the condition of being transparent. Solubility, the ability of a substance to dissolve in the given liquid. Translucent object. Objects through which we can see but not clearly. Transparent objects. Objects through which we can see very clearly. Thank you students. We will meet again in the next chapter.